In today's video, we're gonna take a 3D model and turn it into a realistic wood maquette. It's a fairly simple process and all you have to do is take a picture of your hand, render the model and finish up in Photoshop. Now let me show you how. Hey guys, I'm Oliver and I create videos about architecture, visualization and representation. If you'd like to see more of this content, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So this is my second video on realistic maquette. If you'd like to see more of a step-by-step -step tutorial, make sure to check the first one out. In this one, I'm going to share with you the whole process, but focus on the things you have to do to get a proper hand placement. This is the Villa Savoie from Le Corbusier, and I inserted some low poly people and trees and a rectangular base to make it look like a physical model. Now, the first thing to do in your 3D model after the modeling is done and you're ready to start the visualization process is to create a scene with the camera position according to your hand picture. For example, I used a book to pretend I was holding the physical model and then I aligned my real camera at the same height from the book. Therefore, in the 3D model, I had to set the point of view in a very low position to match the photo. This is just one way to do it but you can definitely play with different camera heights. Make sure to activate the material override and use a wood material. I used one from the V-Ray material library. The other video I mentioned, I explained this step in details. Second important thing is to match the lighting somewhat close to what you have in your room. For example, I know that the lighting from my picture is coming from where my camera was, therefore change the sun settings to position the light source from the same angle. Ok, then another important thing to look at is the overall contrast in the image. Since I took my hand photos indoors, the shadows are soft and the lighting shouldn't be that strong and harsh. Therefore, I reduced the sun intensity reduce the exposure value and even increase the sun multiplier. Those three combined will result in a softer render in terms of contrast with softer shadows. Great, the render is pretty much done. If you'd like to go one extra step, you can insert lighting inside and for that I created the building outline and applied an offset so it won't touch the walls. Then I transformed this plan into a mesh light. That way it is an even light throughout the interior. Oh, and make sure to make it invisible, double sided and change the color to a strong orange yellow. Adjust the last render settings like increasing the quality, render size and adding render elements. Then finally just hit render. And while we wait for this render to finish up, let me talk with you about something important. I know we're going through some uncertain times and we're spending a lot of times indoors to be safe and take care of others. That's why I reached out to the people at Skillshare to partner in this video. As you know, Skillshare has been one of the main sponsors of this channel and now more than ever it seems the perfect time to talk about them. So Skillshare is a community for online learning that has literally thousands of inspiring classes on many creative topics. Now guys, if you're feeling anxious about what we're going through, spontaneous acts of creativity may help you break up the routine of a day spent indoors. And even a creative challenge may offer a helpful structure for setting small goals and feeling a sense of accomplishment. And listen, I think you guys can take great advantage of Skillshare. Not only at times like this, but also when more lives go back to normal. Look, there's one specific class I would like to suggest, which is talking about graphic illustration. Boldly designed with color and shape by Olympia Zagnoli. She has a great approach at creating illustrations, and over her lessons she shared many good tips of her workflow. Drawing, writing and journaling can be a great way to help manage stress, practice mindfulness and feel connected to one another. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. It's really affordable, 10 bucks a month if you sign up for the annual subscription. Well, but since we're partnering up, 
the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two months for free of premium membership so that you can try it out and see if it works for you. Thanks a lot Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, it seems like the render has finished. Make sure to save all render passes and then we can move on to Photoshop. And look, the steps here are simpler. If you have set up the 3D model camera correctly, set up the render to match the lighting settings, you should be able to insert the maquette into the hand pretty easily. I used a book as a dummy object, so it casts a shadow on my hand and on the background. The first thing to do when placing your physical model is to create the maquette's shadow, both in the background making sure you're matching what's already there. For example, the hand shadow on the wall is soft and blurred. And also on the actual hand, making it stronger near the book. And don't forget to use masks for this step. It is the best way to do it, for example, placing the shadow on the wall behind the hand. The image is basically ready. The major part is done. Now you can start to add details to make the maquette a bit more interesting. It's obviously not essential for this image to work, but I highly recommend taking these extra steps. Now I'm going back to my 3D model and using the same scene, I'm exporting a PDF file to overlay some lines on the image. And I like to use Illustrator to clean the file and change the line weights, and then import it into Photoshop. But you can use any CAD software to do so if you wish. You can use it as a black or white lines and even play with the layers blend mode to achieve a different result. In this case, I used soft light and I also made sure to export only the house lines and not trees or people. Then in Photoshop, create a mask to hide necessary parts. Now look, you're in Photoshop, so take advantage of this tool and fix any mistakes you'd like to fix. For example, for me, this tree has some darker spots that gives it too much contrast. So I created a new layer clipped to the maquette layer to paint with brown, thus reducing that appearance. You know I'm all about going that one step further, and I feel that it would make this image so much better if we added some imperfections, like dirt spots, water damage, and stains. Subtle, of course, but enough to give some variation to this physical model. You can find these textures in the website textures.com, just search for wall patches, or wall damage, or something like that. So insert these textures and change the layers blend mode to multiply, then reduce the opacity. Look, as I said earlier, if you have correctly set up your render, it should match your photo, but sometimes it needs some adjustments. And for that, I recommend using some adjustment layers, like color balance and level. So you correct the color temperature and value so they fit together. Well, it's hard to say exactly which steps you should take for this, because each hand photo and maquette render will be different. You will have to get it right by eye. We're about to finish and the last step is to add some light effects on the windows. With a soft brush, punch in some yellow haze around the openings and then try different blend modes to see what works best. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys are safe and healthy. The world is going through some crazy stuff right now. Each location is different, but we are all at home. 
Well, at least we should be. So take this time to improve yourself, study and learn. It is hard, I know, but try to be positive and take advantage of this indoor time. This past weekend, I created a discount coupon for you guys that wanted to take the post-production course during this time. I shared over my Instagram stories. If you missed it and you would like a second round of that, let me know at old.graphics. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you learned something today. If so, make sure to give this video a like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, guys. Bye.